I seen that? So this week, we have done it. We've made it through these. Uh, what was it? Ten movies. Oh. We watched. Yeah. Me and Aaron watched the Predator series, and me and Taylor watched the Alien series, and now we have all come together to talk about Alien vs. Predator one and two, or Alien vs. Predator Requiem. I can't say that word. Yes, Requiem. Has there ever been such a gathering of characters since Infinity War? Now that we are all together, uh, this is un. The, did the Spice Girls do a reunion tour? Uh, they did that last year, I think. Okay. So it's like know, right around the same you, time as Infinity think? War. But I would say we're in the top three. Infinity War, Spice Girls reunion, and now this podcast. I like it. This is the first like time a doing a podcast with more than just two people. And it could go really bad. Well, it will go really bad. It will for sure, absolutely. <laughs> we already got two votes. We I got think two votes. it. I think more accurately, you could say it could go okay. If there's a potential. There's a five percent chance that this won't be awful. But I'm here. I'm here to make it better and to referee the the chat. To referee the chat. I don't think it, there's going to be a lot of disagreements on this one. Yeah. Uh, so overall, terrible, right? Everyone, everyone on the same page. Did you guys like these movies? Did you enjoy them? No. 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 Uh, not not even close. Yeah. So let's well, let's talk about both of them together because separating them feels kind of pointless to me. <sighs> so since we all say- all agreement that that these movies are bad, let's t- let's pick the worst moment that you can think of in both movies because I already know what my number one is. Okay. Well, why don't you go ahead oh, since you got yours already so figured out? Okay, so number one is in the first movie when the predator uh, gives the the main lady, I, I don't know her name, I don't care, he, he cuts off the head of the alien and he shows her that, oh, this will protect you from their blood and he fixes a spear for her and then they go oh. running down the hallway together. <laughs> the stupidest <laughs> moment in any movie. It was dumb. I don't know. Ever. But the I would idea, say the worst moment is every line muttered by the freaking dude from Rescue Me in the second movie. Yeah, no, it was pretty bad. Steven Pasquale? Pasquale? I don't know. He was so awful. He was probably the least valuable player in the whole franchise. Uh, yeah, he's up there. I mean, it's hard to say that because you have so many people who are just dying for no like right. there's no development they just die but as like a main like as, as a surviving member of any of these yeah. movies definitely one of yeah. the worst the worst um, i would say i would say my 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 vote for least valuable would be the dude from the first movie that was taking pictures for his kids oh the guy from uh black hawk down you mean pearl harbor he's in both is he really? He gets the in Black Hawk Down. They shoot the gun over his shoulder, and he goes deaf. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, true. Who was in Pearl Harbor? He was the guy he who stuttered. Kinda, yeah, he, he couldn't talk. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And yeah, he's apparently, because his accent is tough to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I agree. The worst part of the first one to me is the. Uh, the when they the guy falls down the tube and the predators see him just laying there frozen to death and they're like oh we're not going to kill him then the third one just out of nowhere comes up and kills him but you don't even get to <laughs> see anything you just see blood splatter on the side of the thing and i was like oh blood no splatter. this is bad this is pg-13 this is not going yeah. to show anything the only reason True. you watch this it'd be like watching a pg-13 saw movie it's like, what's the point of that? Like, there's no. Was, that one, was it really PG 13? Yeah. It was. So the that's why one. that guy's head didn't get crushed between the stones. I was waiting for his head to <laughs> literally explode. Yeah. And so then he was fine. They do he got, that. Like, scrape. They do that where the walls are crushing in on people in a lot of movies. 
Have you guys ever seen a movie where someone doesn't make it out? Like it's yes. always like a super intense moment, but it always seems like they just barely squeeze out. Yeah, but it's uh, if I can't pinpoint the movie, I think it was one of the potentially one of the mummy movies where one of like a you know like one of the red shirt bad guys yeah. gets crushed when something's coming up. But okay. there's never been a point where a main hero, of course, gets caught up in it. Oh, it'd be died. so good! It, it, it should have happened in this one. It should have. I thought for sure it would. It should have caught his leg. I didn't really do the PG thirteen. And then a face yeah. hugger comes up and gets him while his leg is trapped in the thing. <laughs> so. The premise of the first one is the Predators come to Earth every few hundred years, right? It was 1904 to 2004. I think it was 300 years, right? 100, right? 1904. I thought it was 100. I don't even know. So the the dial was set to 1904. And so it was 100 years after that, 2004. Okay. And every... So as long as I'm right, and I'm I'm pretty confident that that's what it was. Uh, As long as I'm right, every hundred years, the Predators send their teenagers, which some terrible exposition in this movie. Everyone can just like, just by looking, they're like, oh yeah, no, clearly this is what's happening based on. Oh, I hated that when he, (laughs) when he read the hieroglyphics. Yes. Yeah. That was so ridiculous. But so they send, (laughs) (laughs) they send the the teenagers to come and prove themselves against the aliens. So they get human sacrifices to breed aliens. And then the teenagers come prove themselves and get their weapons. Now the guns, I was a little unsure of was that, was that the start? So if the predators show up and they take their guns, now the game is on and the humans yes. just escalated it. Right. Right. That's what was going on? Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's and, why the one guy was like, don't touch those. And when they touched it, and they pulled the last one out. Everything started shifting from there. Yeah. Um, and everybody dies and nobody matters. None of the humans. Right. And it's no. just the, the only other guy who has any kind of development. Well, I guess there's two is the Bishop guy who plays the robot in right. Aliens. Right. And the Mexican guy who is like the archaeologist, both of them. Oh, Pepsi Cola? <laughs> yeah. Both of their deaths are so unimportant. Like you have Bishop who's dying of lung cancer, I think. But he's he's not Bishop though, right? He's I, he's like the, the founder of this company. Wayland? Oh. Right. Yeah. Wayland. Yeah. Right. That was like supposed to be okay. Because remember, this came out. Like in the in my heyday, so everyone was waiting for this movie to come out. So it was a big deal that they cast this guy, and it was supposed to be this awesome reveal that Bishop from the first Alien movies was just a remanufactured person from the original founder of the company. Yeah, and I think his last name was Bishop, Which, right? Big, or was is it Wayland yeah, Bishop? His middle name. Oh, his middle it was name. It Wayland Bishop. Yeah. Okay. Um. Now that concept is interesting, but they didn't do anything with it they, whatsoever. No, they, they didn't do anything they, with they anything really in this movie. The, yeah. There was no, there was no character v- development at all other than the predator. And so Aaron, we just watched uh, the predator and they talked about somebody sleeping with predators. Definitely the woman at the end of this movie, right? Probably like she becomes obsessed <laughs> with that uh, predator. Like, they're like best friends. I oh, thought they were gonna make out like at one point. Hardcore in love with that guy. Yeah, when she when he burned her face with the the face hugger <laughs> bone, <laughs> I was like, oh, they're blood. definitely making out, and it didn't happen. It, that was his way of having sex with her. She was pregnant with him. Oh, is that what yeah. it was? And then she oh, gave yeah. birth. Gotcha. Uh, Emerson James says, "Is this IMDb live? How dare you, sir? You know what Can this is." <laughs> Amateur James, I'm about to ban you, sir. Amateur James, you're more than welcome in my stream anytime, any place, anywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they are. Well, okay, is there anything valuable about the first movie? Was there anything that you guys feel like is worth even talking about? Because it's you can't see any of the action scenes. There's no development. The only ah. thing 
the movie doesn't start until it's the last 10 minutes. And so what do you guys, was there anything there was before the one end? Thing yeah. That, that I thought was fine. And it was when he, okay. So the Wayland was talking to the main lady and she was telling a story about uh, her dad. I, you know, they climbed that mountain and then he died on the way back because he wouldn't turn around. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. And then she basically said, like, oh, well, he died in agony. Like his last 10 minutes were in pain before he died, blah, blah, blah. And then Waylon was like, y- you really think that's what he was thinking about? His last 10 minutes, he got to hike up this mountain with his daughter. They achieved their goal like that's that's probably what he was thinking of yeah it has nothing to do with anything but i thought i was like okay that's an interesting story yeah everything else pure garbage yeah and that was his his reasoning that he should be allowed to go on the expedition because he's dying and she's like yeah i can't lose you know i lost my dad doing something dumb that he shouldn't have done and he's like well don't I'm you think dad, and i'm paying you a lot of money <laughs> so just let me go that's true this too. shouldn't even be a, a like an argument but he's slowing him down, you know, like he's dying. He's, he can't breathe. He's, you know, every few minutes he's having to yeah. take his inhaler or whatever the, that was. But, but what's the rush? Uh, aliens, predators chasing you. Well, they, they weren't didn't know that at the time. Like, oh yeah. They, they were knew. just exploring. They knew. He knew. <laughs> so one of the scenes that I took that was positive from the, from the trash heap that was the first movie was there was a point where Bishop was like, you guys run, I'll slow down the predator and the predator picks him up, scans his body. See, he is not worth killing. No. Tosses him to the side because there is no honor in killing this guy. that's about to die anyways. Yeah. And then he didn't kill Bishop until Bishop made himself a threat, which is kind of the predator lore. So yeah. that was literally the only scene that you could take away from this film where you're like, yeah, that, that wasn't garbage. It says, you don't turn your back on me. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would cut that line and make his attack way more effective. Like it should have cost what, what the predator. Have him say? What, what should his one liner be? Uh, I don't know. I would have him not say anything, but that's just me. Um, he goes, I'll see you in beep and then throw the fire. Yeah. <laughs> but just so that would be that would be, that would be like 90, just static because I'll see you. But just say beep. Actually say beep. <laughs> the uh burn in heck. <laughs> yeah. Burn in burn in H E double hop. Oh, you yeah. got it first. Dang it. That's what I was going. <laughs> um <laughs> As your mentor, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not my mentor. You're older than me, but we all know. We all know who looks up to who. Um the yeah, him setting the predator on fire really should have affected the predator more. Like it could have because at that point there were still two predators, I believe. And it should have kind of set him back, slowed him down somewhat. And I think that would have been a good send off for <laughs> he has no idea. What's I know, that? it's true. Like, we, we lost, lost you for like seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes. I saw you guys freeze, but I figured I'd just keep going. Okay. Um, but yeah, so... Like, if the, 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 um, the Twitch is back up or not. I don't think that it is. It says it is on my end. Oh, okay. Oh, we should be back on, I think, Amateur James. But uh, Yeah, there we go. It's back on my side. All right. Uh, yeah, so Bishop should have done more damage and it would have been a cooler send off for his character. Basically, he's like, you're pathetic. You're not worth my time. And he turns around, blow torches him and the predator's like, all right, well, I guess I'll kill you now. And it was just kind (laughs) of unceremonious, you know, like there wasn't, it wasn't like the moment was cool, but he didn't, it, the sacrifice wasn't worth anything, which is pretty much all their sacrifices because they're all just alien fodder. You know, they're all just breeding grounds and everyone <laughs> dies that way. Except her hero. Except the hero. But she, she uh an alien head and an alien staff. Who is the hero though? Is she, her is she the hero or is the predator the hero? I would say it's the Ugh. 
because yeah, predator, I guess. because the predator has much more of a story arc, even though he has no dialogue. He has much more of a story arc than she does. Yeah, hers is garbage. Yeah, she you know she starts off and she's climbing that ice wall and uh, she's super tough, super capable. Shows up, super tough, super capable. Goes through everything, super tough, super capable. Is not afraid of the predator. Like the only weakness she shows is when she like gives him the weapon. Is like, all right, don't kill me, don't kill me. And then the predator accepts her, and then she just you know she defeats the main alien. But when you look at the predator, he actually has like this, you know, he he shows up, he has a mission, he has a goal that gets interfered with. He loses his team. Now he's on his own, and he has to come to terms with working with someone who is generally his prey to be able to defeat this, you know, uber monster that they've now set free. And so like his, his, the change, you know, the, the story arc, the predator has much more, it's not good and it's not deep, but he has much more. more interesting. Yeah. Much more interesting. Uh, the Calvinist tells me to go to bed. It is 11 AM in the morning here, Calvinist. So <laughs> I, I will not yet. <laughs> Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? Go to sleep. I mean, he's the one that's got a new baby that's probably going to keep him up all night. I know you got to sleep every chance you get, Calvinist. True. Uh, I would say that your assessment of of him, um, just as the culture of the predator, man, um, <laughs> there'd be no way that he would ever team up with the, with a human. He would just kill her and move on or to leave her. Yeah. Yeah, like like a bear would team up with a human. Right, exactly. exactly. As if it could yeah. understand that concept. It's like a bear and a lion and a human are in the jungle. And the bear's like, I got to work with this human so I can kill this lion. It would never happen. I mean, obviously the predator the has... The lion also has a little lion that pops out of its mouth. <laughs> can we talk about how dumb that is? Like, It's the stupidest thing. And they, they use it like... Like, oh, we got to get it in there. It's our trademark. It's yeah. So cool. It's a tongue punch and he just bursts through people's skulls, but it's always uh, dumb. And yeah. it like really weakens the, the whole threat of the alien. Like the alien's got this big mouth with all these giant teeth, but then and it's the got long this scorpion tail that can stab through anything. Yeah. But it's and actually, if I can't reach you with my tongue. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> yeah. It's that As mouth is so tiny. 15 feet. Yeah, because it's yeah, oh, it's so stupid. It'd be better if the little mouth came out and then just like ate the people, just swallowed them whole. Because at this point, why even be it like another mouth? Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Well, yeah, what a terrible design, right? Like, what's the what's the value to having two mouths? Having a big mouth, but you can only swallow with the little mouth. Like, how does that all work? Do they have two stomachs? Yeah, yeah must. The little stomach is in the big stomach and yeah. it pops out to digest the food. Yeah. But so we get to the last 10 minutes. Everyone's dead. The predator and this woman are working together. And the 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 queen alien is on the loose. And it's trying to escape. And they get in this big fight between the three of them. She uses the spear, which I actually I know Aaron was saying he didn't like. I didn't mind it. I thought that was kind of a cool concept of using the alien head as a shield and using the tail as a spear but i would have much rather that had been the predator doing that than the woman right. i didn't, I, I didn't yeah, say I, that it was a dumb concept him mm-hmm. doing that i just think it's a dumb concept that he would stop in the middle of trying to kill aliens to chop a head off of a alien and do that and give it to her yeah and then run alongside next to her and lose potentially his life trying to keep you know trying to hang with a human yeah yeah no that's fair i i think uh had like i would have liked to seen the predator lose all his armor like one we don't need the people people are only for exposition there's not she didn't need to survive you know she could have died and it could have just been alien versus predator like it's built <laughs> you know and but i would have liked to seen him lose all his armor and have to kind of macgyver his way against it by using it as a shield and yeah. using the alien as a weapon to fight back. Like, I think that would have been pretty cool, but given it's a her it was like, kind of felt really wasted because I don't know one that alien head as a shield 
would not have protected her when she stabbed the uh, queen alien in the stomach. That It would have just dumped acid all over her. But, you know, that's not how movies work. No, no, no. Why didn't he mark her forehead? Don't they mark their foreheads with the blood? Why do you mark her cheek? Oh, Because the script told her to. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what it said on page 93. <laughs> mark cheek. <laughs> Uh, right. Yeah, no, I don't know. So you weren't so, so she wasn't so hideous, like yeah. uh, Inglorious Bastards. Oh, you know that. Okay. That's the whole. Yeah. The Nazi thing you on imagine, the forehead. You imagine, if you burned, you imagine if you would have burned a swash in her head. <laughs> that was the the predator mark. That would have made, made all the movies. The movie just became <laughs> epic if he did that. It would have been my favorite movie. And the Hitler <laughs> Hitler was working for the predators the whole time. Oh, God. <laughs> um, so the end of the movie, they strap a water tank to the queen alien and it sucks it yeah. down into the water. Basically, another version of sucking an alien into the airspace. Yeah. The space lock or the, the, yeah, airlock. the airlock. And the I was, abyss. Yeah. And it's just like, can't you guys have a more creative way? Because they kill aliens throughout the entire movie. They're exploding. Yeah. They're getting shot. The boss. They never can do the boss. It's <laughs> another one of those things. Like we got to stick with what works. Yeah. But yeah, no. So that was, I was kind of like, oh, just this cut again. It off. Cut it in half. Yeah. Make it stab itself. Anything. It really like, or even have the predators pop out. I mean, I guess the whole point was they don't want to help. Uh, they want to let the predator fight Finn for himself. Otherwise he's worthless, but right i don't know this alien versus predator one pretty dumb it uh I, i'm gonna give this one like a negative three. Oh no this is a negative four negative four what do you think aaron negative four. i was definitely gonna go with a negative four yeah it's so bad it's really bad the writing's terrible the action's terrible the gore isn't is non-existent everything's done off camera because it's pg-13 um, uh -huh. the models still don't look good. I don't think they've ever nailed the predator. He always looks like a man in a rubber tried. suit. Yeah, I mean I, they definitely try. Like I think it looked cool in the eighties, but now he just like the gloves that he wears. Like you can tell he can't. He has no dexterity, and it's like this is supposed to be <laughs> the ultimate hunter, someone who can't even you know do a <laughs> jigsaw puzzle. Up? But uh, so that brings uh, us to Alien versus Predator number two, Requiem. Now, okay, so I'm gonna start by saying I probably didn't get to see half of this movie. Okay, any I don't know if it was the the version that I had or what, but any scene that took place in the dark, I could not see anything. Yeah, yeah, I had, like pitch black in my house, as dark as I could make it could not discern anything and it was driving me crazy it's like i don't even know why i'm bothering watching this i'll just listen and see if i can figure it out <laughs> i'm pretty sure you need to turn up the light on your tv oh it's up it's just it could not out anything the the first one i thought was way worse the lighting in the first one it was way harder to see the second one was a little better but it was still they do everything in shadows because they have to hide the models and so they do, they intentionally make it dark. So you have to imagine what's going on. And that's such a terrible way to do movies. So let me or two. So this is the first time that I've seen the movie. Mm -hmm. Right. But the, the premise behind it is it was a whiplash from the first one. And if you look, the first one was PG-13, right? There, there were three predators, and they were all basically wusses, right? Yeah. So fast forward to Alien vs. Predator 2. It's rated R. There's tons of gore. One predator takes out like 10,000 aliens all by himself. So when you look at it, it's a complete opposite 
of the first movie because you know the predators were supposed to be these highly evolved and again it's supposed to be teenagers versus <laughs> all have these highly evolved fighters yeah. that are going in and they should be able to annihilate some pre- uh, some alien and then the fans had such a whiplash on the on the PG-13 and how weak the predators were projected in this one in the first one so we get one predator versus a ton of alien. Yeah. And you can see there's one point he takes his mask off. You can see his jaw has been destroyed. Uh, he, he's only got two fangs on one side. And I think the point of that was to say like, this is a grizzled, you know, it's veteran. Of war. Yeah. Yeah. This is not a teenager this time. This is someone who this is, this guy's legit, you know, and you see it when he shows up, he just starts killing everyone. He doesn't care. He's, right. He's not looking for a girlfriend like the teenager was. He's like, I'm yeah. anyone. And that's really what it should be. They they shouldn't be working together at all. It should be the humans are trying to avoid the war going on and not participate in it. Um, but it's this one. This one was clearly done as a horror film. They established the characters like a horror film. They, you know, set up all these tropes and it. It almost felt like a parody of horror. It was super campy. But they don't land it um, because they just like the only the one thing that was kind of a subversion was the girlfriend dying and the way she died because they're just. Did she die? Yeah. I couldn't see. I legit <laughs> could not tell who was dying and it, who wasn't. It's the best death in all the in the, the whole franchise. <sighs> There, just because it was, I was so gonna say, Yeah. There, there, I, I didn't know how many aliens or how many predators were in this movie. I didn't know if it was one of each or if there was like a hundred of each. I could not tell. Yeah. There was one predator. I, I see. I, I thought there was like a few. And unlimited aliens. Okay. That makes sense. Um, but so the they're running down the, the hospital hallway trying to get to the helicopter. And she right. crosses like a T intersection in the hospital, you know? And the predator's boomerang just chops her in half and sticks her to the wall, and she's just instantly dead, just out of nowhere. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't remember that. And if you're watching a horror movie, you would expect her to survive. Like, at that point, it's like, okay, these guys are, are probably safe. They've made it safe. this far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because they established the love story, whatever, if you want to call it that, <sighs> between sure. the two of them. Um, but, yeah, no, they kill her. And, and it's like it's the best death scene in I would say the entire series. Uh, I but, will say this: this movie had one good thing going for it, and it's that for most of it, I forgot that I was actually watching an Alien versus Predator movie, okay. and I thought it was just a separate, really bad movie. <laughs> that's good. That's in, that's in the positive category for you because I forget about the alien series for just a moment. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm, and then every 10 minutes I'm like, Oh no, that's right. This is stupid again. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is stupid, but it's like a different kind of soap opera. Stupid. It's, it's a weird right. mix of like uh lifetime sci-fi. Yeah. That's like, exactly what it if like. you, you mix those two channels together and this is what it would produce. But yeah, they, they spent way too much time with the split stories where mm-hmm. you had the predators showing up and researching and then researching and then researching. And then you have, you know, was it the guy getting beat up and his keys being thrown in? And like, who would really go in the sewer looking for their keys? I mean, really? And yeah, so yeah. They, they spent too much time flip flopping between the two. They should have just went straight after the action. Yeah. Well, also, they had to do a lot of cleanup, the Predator did, that was unmotivated to try to protect the canon, even though these aren't supposed to be canonical. He was going they through... Not? They're not. They're, like, outside of it, but kind of... They're, like, trying to make it fit, sort of. Um, he's going through with that blue acid, destroying right. everyone who had interacted with an alien to like kind of clear it up to the point where it's like, oh yeah, no one would know about aliens because the predator cleaned it up. But why would he do that? Because the script said so. Because the script said so. It was, yeah. yeah. That's the catch all answer. Yeah. 
it just didn't there was zero motivation toward it like it wasn't even the because he can scan bodies so he could look and see if they had alien parasites or anything like that that he was worried about and he was just like no nah, i'll just dump this unlimited blue liquid all over you and <laughs> it's all good and then they there's one point where he he the alien dies in the swimming pool and he pours the liquid into the swimming pool and it burns a hole in the bottom of the swimming pool and drains the entire pool but you never they don't show you that that you don't get to see it you just the swimming pool's full and then the next moment they walk in and the swimming pool's empty and it's like okay just one insert shot of a giant hole in the bottom of the swimming pool would help <laughs> but what's the uh what do you guys want to kind of establish one of the storylines maybe uh I'll tell you my the one that I could see that happened mostly during the daytime that also really bothered me. There's so there's this love triangle between yeah, what Johnny was it? Uh, it doesn't dude matter. dude from Sons of Anarchy. I don't know if you watched that. Oh, is that and is he the prospect? Yeah, he was I, half sack dude. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I recognize that dude him. went nuts. Yeah, and then uh, a girl and a guy. And I hated that multiple times, instead of saying that she broke up with him, she said that she fired him. She fired him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) What is that? That was so... Is that what kids are saying? Yeah. Then? In the 90s, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you want me to tell you how many girlfriends I fired? (laughs) (laughs) I fired him. I always laid my girlfriends off. That sounds weird. That's not... Anyways... (laughs) Uh, yeah, so that was stupid. I don't, I don't even understand the whole him and his, I I, I can't grasp the brother coming back. Okay. So he was, I had a question. His deal was and why he was so terrible. Yeah. I had a question about that guy, the Garrity from rescue me. Yeah. Uh huh. He definitely, he was an ex cop and they just never finished that storyline. Right. Like, I don't think he was though, because he made the he he made the comment when he got there. He's like, "Oh, I'm used to riding in the back of one of these." When he's in the cop car, implying um, that he just used to be someone who got in trouble a lot. I guess, and then he left. To me, it was like he got picked up by the cop, his friend, and it seemed like they right. were partners. And the guy was like, "Was it worth it?" And he's like, "Yep, like not a problem. Three years, it was worth it." And so I was like, "Oh, they're gonna establish that he was." I my impression was he was a cop who did something heroic but against the law and had to pay the price for it, and that was what they were going to reveal later on. And maybe maybe they're putting it in there to like, you know, have some weird backstory that you expect them to pay off, and they just don't. And they're just like, you know, he's actually a dirtbag. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, very so strange. Bad. Yeah. He he felt like he was the only one who was taking this movie like way too seriously he was in a different movie completely he was he was he was also lit differently he was always in shadows he was awful yeah he was really bad i mean the cop was not great no the cop was terrible no one was great everyone sucked yeah everybody sucked the woman so they find a severed hand in in the forest yeah the the dog brings it up brings it and they're looking there and the woman, the guy's wife shows up and she's like, where's my husband? Where's my kid? Which I was shocked. They, they, they killed that kid. I thought that was crazy because that's one of the main. Yeah. yeah. Well, they killed all those babies. They killed all, all the pregnant women. They, they don't like kids, but uh, she's like, we can't find them. They're not home yet. What's going on? And he's like, maybe they're driving home. And it's like, why would you say that? <laughs> you know you found a severed hand. You know there's only one person yeah. who's been reported missing in this area. You could have fingerprinted that hand. And there's just like so many little things that would have like solved that issue to where you don't have to be like, oh yeah, he's probably just driving home. Don't worry about it. And he says like, he tries to like protect people's feelings a few times with logic like that. That just doesn't make any sense. Well, in his head, he was thinking he could be driving home maybe with one hand, <laughs> they, but there is still a chance. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I would think they would have found he the car, too. They did find his car. 
So why is he telling them that they're driving home? Because he's an idiot. He said he said when when they first were like, oh, I don't know, something about anyone who you know who's going to be, and they're like, oh, well, we found this dude's whatever his name was, his vehicle, and they're like, yeah. oh, great. He usually brings his kid out with him. Hmm. So they found his car. They yeah. found his hand. Hmm. Could be driving home. Maybe him and the son brought separate vehicles. I don't know. It was maybe it was him just like trying to get her to stop asking about it. But yeah. It was a poor attempt. Well, this should be illegal, I think, to like try to give hope when there's not, you know, just to like lie to someone like, oh, no, they're definitely driving, driving home. Don't worry. When you're like, like he's he, definitely dead. <laughs> he can be optimistic, but still present the facts. Like, look, I, I don't know. He could be driving home, but we also found his hand and his car. But I'm not going to rule anything out. Yeah. Could be driving home. <laughs> on the, we found the car, the hand, but not the guy or the kid. The yeah. end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's it. That's all you need to worry about. <laughs> what'd you guys think about the kid dying was that shocking to you was that uh did that was that effective because that was the point right it was supposed to be like this movie is different we are willing I, to murder children i wasn't shocked and i didn't care i didn't care about that kid i was interested to see i was like are they actually going to show an alien burst out of this kid's chest though and then maybe they did i don't know because i couldn't <laughs> see <laughs> they did <laughs> Well, did they really? Well, what they did, Dang it. what they did, I missed it. Is they did like a super, super close shot of the chest. So you know, like with in the first Alien and some other movies, you actually see the person reacting and then it actually bursting out of their chest. You get a wide shot of it, and this you just see like a close up of the jacket and chest, and oh, yeah. right man, and I don't remember that part either. Would it be more effective? Because this was kind of my thought, and I was talking to my wife about it. To have the kid have to watch his dad go through all that and not be able to help as a like a horror effective element. in what way? As a like to make a better movie? Maybe. Like to to <laughs> encourage the horrorness of this movie. You know what I'm saying? Like you have oh, yes. the kid's gonna die for sure, so that's terrible, but you don't care about the kid. But if the dad no. is the one who, you know, gets his arm chopped off and the kid's like trying to help him, trying to help him. The face hugger gets on his face and, you know, impregnates him, whatever you want to call it, lays eggs in him. Um, and the kid like can't do anything. And then the dad wakes up and the kid's like, oh, I'm safe. You know, like we're going to be okay. We just have to get out of here. And then the alien bursts out of its chest and then the alien kills the kid. Like to me, that's a way better sequence than just having the same thing happen twice. Uh, I guess it's a good idea in theory, but if they had done that, they would have made it look so stupid that we'd be arguing that it was pointless. <laughs> that we, they should have done the other way. They should have. They should have just had the alien burst out of the kid's chest. <laughs> That's what we want to see. That's it it would have made for a better movie. <laughs> well, what do you guys? What, Aaron? Do you want to explain the military wife, her subplot? <clears throat> I don't know if I can because like I was watching it, but I, I don't think I retained anything from her story. Like I remember her coming home. Mm -hmm. I remember when her husband got attacked by the aliens, but I don't really remember them really giving a story arc to her other than like she came home. The kid doesn't want anything to do with her because the dad's been raising her. And then all of a sudden the aliens show up and, the dad is dead and she's dragging the kid out of the house. Yeah. I called it when the dad looked at the window. I was like, oh, he's dead. And instantly. Yeah. <laughs> it was like so, so telegraphed. Everything in this movie is like so tropey that you know what's going to happen. Everything but the blonde hair girl's death. That was the only one where you're like, oh, I didn't see that coming at all. But everything you else was... Who, like, my actual favorite character in this movie was, was Rickety Cricket. <laughs> the uh pizza manager yeah yeah no he was truly terrible well so you they like mark people for death right uh -huh. in this movie that that you have the the bully guy who punches the uh the guy from sons of anarchy 
because, and it wasn't even a punch worthy offense in my opinion. Like he, the guy's like, Oh, you're working pizza. Huh? Stupid. And the guy's like, Oh, I, now I know who ordered the meat lovers. <laughs> and the guy's <laughs> like, the problem with that though is in the early 2000s the worst thing you could say to someone is that they were gay. That they're gay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that they're gay so that's what enraged him so much i guess it just didn't feel earned <laughs> it felt very like he should have had there should have been a better reaction or more of a back and forth or he should have had like a where he like try to jump at him or whatever, and he gets stopped, and then like beats him up outside or something to like. Or it should have just been more personal with an insult. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. That's that's kind of my point. Was just like there was no. I mean, he should have just. I don't know. I don't know. It was dumb. <laughs> are you are you trying to put logic to this crazy movie? I'm just trying to make it make sense in my head. Like I I don't need it to be logical. I just am trying to piece the pieces together. Can't, bro. You can't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, everyone in this movie gets infected with aliens again. The whole city gets overrun. Uh, you get spoiler. <laughs> the Whoa. Whoa. what did what did you guys think of the predator alien? I I I hated Was it. A predator alien. <laughs> oh my goodness, Taylor! I couldn't see. The, I don't think I saw the predator. At all, it was so it dark. It's it was, the way the movie opened up. Yeah, it's the way the okay, first one I remember, ended. I remember and the thinking way- when the first one ended, I was like, oh, what if that was like a, a mix of the alien and a predator? Oh, man. That's exactly what so it they was. they actually did it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like Mad Men, they did. That's the reason why the predator showed up was to kill it. Yeah, okay, well, because well, he, kills, he kills a few predators himself. Not only does he kill the one that he was inside, but he he comes out and yeah, kills a okay, couple. Yeah, I couldn't see any of that when they were on the ship or whatever. Yeah, so he's got like a big head. It's not like the long. I could see one. silhouettes. That was it. He's got braids, uh, or the uh, what do you call it? Yeah, braids, and uh, yeah. he's got the jaws, the four jaw teeth over his mouth with his additional tongue thing. But he's Did also a predator face pop out of his mouth too. <laughs> I wish. I, I'm pretty sure it was just an alien tongue. Like that little. Would've, that would have been awesome. little braids. <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> the tongue with little braids on it. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Like if if we're sitting Some here and, and they don't reveal it to the very end, like right when they're the final battle between the predator <laughs> and the alien takes place, and all of a sudden you see him scream, the four tongues come out, and then the mouth comes out, and it screams, and four tongues come out of that too. <laughs> I would like to see about this movie was. the tongue come out with a shoulder mounted uh, laser gun. There you go. <laughs> the full armor and everything. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. We, no. You. You. We could, get a, we could get a scene where we see the predator alien with the the heat sensory, and then all of a sudden you see like a little small camera, like a picture in picture. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, it's, <laughs> and he's looking around with a little head out of its mouth. <laughs> Well, um, I want to see the movie where the tongue predator has to earn his spear by killing the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to just fight the facehuggers. Oh, yeah, that, that was the, that was the script for the next one. We just <laughs> out on it. Do you guys think they are actually intending to make a number three, or do you think that yeah, that, absolutely that last yeah. little bit was just in case? Well, you know that they actually came out with a animated movie in 2015. Mm. I didn't want to kind of bring it up because I didn't want to try and watch something that could. No, we're not watching yeah, it. Yeah, we're no, done. We're, this we're done here. It's only 20 minutes. Though. It's only 20 minutes, though. That's 20 minutes too not long. Like it. And got... it's cold. It's cold. Alien versus Predator Redemption. Ooh. Because oh, they're trying boy. to redeem the past two terrible movies. You can't. <laughs> You can't agree. Yeah, I've watched twelve um, movies in this in the last couple months or whatever it's been, and that's like okay. Well, so hold on, then I do oh. have a question. Okay, sorry. Why would the alien that comes out of the predator be 
a alien predator? Why wouldn't it just be an alien like it is for everybody else? Because as that we, one that was in the bowl wasn't like a half bowl alien. Well, it was smaller and faster. Which oh, like bulls, small and fast. <laughs> yep. But also in Prometheus I don't buy it. and Covenant, we also see any time an alien is impregnating something else, it it adapts. It it mixes with its DNA. And so for it to be a predator alien is somewhat consistent, even though it's it's really far out there. And also he gets pregnated by the spear, the, the alien's uh tail, not a face hugger or anything like that, which feels a little inconsistent to me. What's up, Father Ironheart? Did I lose you guys again? No no no, I'm I'm oh, here. I was well, just trying to I was I just trying speak to speak. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's at this point. I think we should just give it the negative five that we all. Know. <laughs> oh, it's a negative five, absolutely. <laughs> well, before before we get to that, uh, the baby scene. What? How do you guys feel about that? Do you guys think that alien ate all those babies or just left them to be? I was waiting. Those like, babies like are with dead. The boy, I was waiting to see the next scene where just a bunch of mini aliens are bursting out of the babies. <laughs> Do you think do you think that was their intention? Do you think they're going to do that that they're going to walk in and just see all these dead little babies with baby aliens popping out? Maybe they did do that and they're like, "No, nope, you got to cut this. This yeah. is not." Cuz that's got to be This is a different this is a different movie. That's got to be Yeah, that's got to be way past R, I would imagine. Like even in an R-rated movie, I don't think you could have I, I as soon as I saw the babies, I was like, "Look, if they had actually done this, even ahead of time, I was like, this is something that I probably would have heard about. It would have been like yeah, a notorious yeah. thing." Yeah. But yeah, now this movie was garbage. Cowards. You guys give a negative fives? Is that what you're going with? Negative five. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. worse than the other one. It's definitely worse. It was the worst. Uh, this is maybe one of the worst movies that I've ever actually seen. Ooh. It's a true statement. I would agree with you. I've seen. It felt so. B listy. Oh, it was just so awful. We are talking about Alien versus Predator number two. Um, but I think I might give it a negative four. Oh, I think it's wow. <laughs> a glowing review. <laughs> I I think it's got a little bit uh redemption to it, to where it's not in what the way. In worst. what way? That was the third. That was the third. Movie. There is no Kurt Cameron. There's no dance okay. scene. There's no musical. So like it's definitely it hasn't hit the bottom, right? There's still there's still more you could do to ruin it. There's still more you could do to make it worse. But this is, I mean, it is up there for one of the worst. Oh, also uh, the uh, line where the lady's like, "The government never lies to people." Oh, I oh, love I that. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> it's like, "Oh, okay, now we're getting what? in a government social commentary." Yeah. Oh, well, no, I mean, come on. I mean, it falls in line with, oh, the global warming is going to heat up our planet. They're just going to take over and live here. Which one was that? Predators, right? <laughs> yeah, that was a predator. Uh, the predator, the 2000. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 17 one, yeah. Oh, yeah. The terrible. Ex- terrible, terrible. Here, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Aaron. I also like the, oh. the exchange when they get in the tank. And he's, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> when he's like, oh, man, the gun. It's like or don't shoot me or something like that. He's like, don't crash. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for saying that because I thought about crashing. Well, it comes back. They do crash. Yeah. And he's like, I God, thought I told, I told you, you not, not to crash. crash. <laughs> he also... You told me not to crash the tank. When the cop and the guy are separating, they he says, I hope we're both wrong. And then they go off on their separate ways. Yeah, why can't you both be right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I hope, I hope we both <laughs> die for this. Oh, it's so dumb. Uh, but Aaron, where can people find you? Find us at Twitch TV forward slash Fire Resistant Podcast. And then everyone, go and listen to uh, Taylor Enixon's poop story. It's on YouTube. I believe it's called the craziest story ever. And it is the best thing you'll, it's like the best 10 minutes you'll spend in your entire life. And it's a hundred percent true. Cause people, it's 100% true. People don't believe you, Taylor. I've never yeah. I, I don't this is it. not something that I would 
makeup. <laughs> yeah, this would be <laughs> that's a weird way to get attention. But uh, yeah, so yeah, we'll, it, it, it's, it's, it's true. We will be back. Um, Aaron and I. We've talked about it before, and he can't go back on it now. We are going to be doing the Twilight series next. Oh, geez, I oh, forgot about that. No. <laughs> oh, you ruined my day, bro. Why? <laughs> and Taylor and I, next week, uh, the next podcast we'll do is we're going to do Heat, and then we're going to do the Batman series. That way. Wait a minute. Why do you guys get to do Heat and I have to do Twilight? <laughs> okay. To be fair, Heat was one of the first movies I was like, hey, let's do Heat. And you said, no, that's too long. Let's do. And then we did Jigsaw instead. That's, that's fake news. That's no, fake news. that's exactly what happens. That's fake news. But uh, yeah, so that's our next coming. Our next podcast will be starting Twilight. Me and Taylor will be doing Heat. And then we're going to start the Batman series from Batman, the original one, and all the way through until Lego Batman. What the yeah. heck? The heck? I say no to Heat, so I get... This is your punishment. <laughs> Alan was very offended that you didn't want to watch Heat with him. Holy, I was. <laughs> I'm still. And then you to go. Then, then, I think. I think this. I think this is his retribution because he knows that he's going to lose the weight loss challenge because he knows oh. how much I love Batman. So he's like, "Oh, I'll watch Batman with Taylor well, because you know." <laughs> Taylor. Taylor was the one who came up with Batman. To be fair, yeah. he's the one who said it. I, I will. I will unsubscribe. From your podcast, if you guys start arguing about what happened in what Batman movie. Oh my goodness. Look, had I known Batman was your favorite, uh, I would have done nothing different. <laughs> how, about, how about this? Instead of instead of doing Twilight, how about we, we do the Superman series, right? And then we all get together for Batman versus Superman. Well, oh no, but that <laughs> one is so bad. <laughs> the only the only reason I And it's I, the alien versus predator of the series. <laughs> If <laughs> I know that, but still, it's just the fact that like we're keeping it up. So, like, how in the world are we going to have the Avengers us get back together? Well, we, I mean, if, you, if we're watching Twilight and you're watching Batman, so we okay. If you guys so, want to do that, I'm on board. But the only reason why I was saying let's not do that is because <laughs> just to have two different. I really want to watch eight. Just to have two, <laughs> yeah that, and <laughs> to have two different styles of movies. Oh, okay, fine. Because we did Predator and Alien, which were almost identical, which is 12 movies. It's 10 podcasts back-to-back that are almost exactly the same. And so I'm thinking if we do Batman and Twilight interspersed together, it's at least not so repetitive is my thought. Okay, but I do have another question for the both of you. Yes. Okay, I, you don't have to go in depth, but what did you guys think of the two... Um, Prometheus movies like Prometheus and Covenant. What did you guys think of those movies? Uh, uh, Covenant they were much better than the original. Yeah, but still not good. They yeah. were visually better. The acting okay. was better, but the story just kind of sucked. Yeah, Covenant yeah. makes Prometheus Covenant better. Wasn't terrible. Prometheus was boring. Covenant was okay. But that's, before, that's the best thing I could say about it. I guess before we get into this, why don't we go over our rankings for the two series? 